YouTube folks out there, Facebook friends, people of Black Junction TV. My name is Adam Aaron. This is the Hard Black Truth. So we're heating up towards the election. Got a lot of things going on. Uh, <laughs> recently just had a fire of our post office in my area. You would think that it's a pretty big deal. It's an ongoing investigation. There are no details at this time. A lot of rumors circulating around that. But the moment I find out more information on this, I'll bring that to you. In the meantime, I did want to talk about the situation, the uh, falling out between Yvette Carnell and Sandy Darity and the greater ADOS organization. But first, a quick message. I've fallen for this mysterious black woman. Her alluring smile and intoxicating dark skin have set my frozen heart ablaze with burning desire. But I'm a counter-racist hitman. It's my sacred duty to spy on these crooked cops, waiting for the right moment to expose their secrets and end their reign of terror. Now, I'm in love with one of my targets, silently watching her. Gazing into her deep brown eyes, my heart pulses with uncertainty. Is this black woman one of them, or is she with us? How do I manage this love battle waging within my heart while delivering justice to the black community? Find out in War of the Heart, an Occam Jeffers novel. Coming December 1st, everywhere books are sold. Visit spiritof1811publishing.com for details. Yes, yes, yes. Shout out to brother Josiah Starr on his novel, War of the Heart. Guys, I'm telling you, after reading, I'm about halfway into the book right now, and it's a wonderful piece of work. I encourage you guys to go ahead and make that your stocking stuffer for this holiday season. Or if you're just into reading in general, enjoy fictional novels, please pick this up. You'll have links posted in the description. But moving forward, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get right into this, right? All right, so let's get right down to it. I like this still shot better than the previous oops one, but, you know, I think either could apply in this case. Uh, but basically, Darity is out. Darity is out because he's had some criticisms of Ice Cube, and Ice Cube right now is the ADOS darling boy because, you know, he mentioned ADOS, so they... Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore, they can't afford to have any kind of rift. And also, Darity had something to say about the bill out there in California, that HR 40 Part 2 that they passed out there in California, uh, that they're touting as the reparations bill. And then you go in and you actually read up on the bill and you find out that it's much the same that was taking place with HR 40. So it's irrelevant. It's, it's counterproductive. But they're out there patting each other on the asses and giving high fives and talking about, hey, DOS, we here. These folks. These folks don't know a milk jug from a goddamn bottle of vodka. It's just it's just sick at this point. But yeah, Darity is out. Yvette Carnell now has been openly chastising Darity now for several weeks. And I guess everything came to a commutative head. Uh, I'm not even sure if I pronounced that correct. But anyway, it came to a head um, within the last 24 to 48 hours and Darity is out. Uh, Yvette Carnell has disavowed him. Antonio Moore has disavowed him. You know, now it isn't Dandy Darity and Dandy Darity and I got the data. It's, it's, you know, uh, it was Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore. They co-founded and everybody else get in line. And if you can't get in line, you're not part of ADOS. And that's just where they're at with it. 
and I kept this image because I knew that this would happen eventually. What's come out of all of this is that, you know, the rift was long present. Uh, I got to give credit to Sandy Darity for holding out for as long as he did. Darity was looking for an out back when A. Dunce attacked Bishop Talbert Swan. I have a link post in the description on that one. And shout out to Bishop Swan because he actually tuned in and watched that video and gave me a shout out. I really, I really, really appreciated that. Um, but yeah, they just out of nowhere decided that they were going to attack uh, uh, Bishop Talbert Swan because he had responded favorably to the Foundational Black American Conference tour that was being advertised by Tariq Nasheed. And I guess since they were disagreeing or beefing with Tariq Nasheed at the time, you know, we couldn't have this. And they were asking for Talbert Swan to uh, explain himself as though he owes anybody an explanation. Right. And what was crazy was that Talbert Swan was going to speak at the ADOS conference. They ruined that. OK, because they wanted to make sure that there were lines drawn in the sand, essentially. So you couldn't go speak and be ADOS uh, and, and hit like or, or throw up some fire emojis under Tariq Nasheed's advertisement. But, you know, you can get a, a, a Paul Saul or whatever that white dude's name who was a white ally to stand up and speak. Haven't heard from him lately either, have you? Anyway, I just thought that was interesting to point out. And when Sandy Darity saw that basically unwarranted attack on Bishop Talbot Swan, he was looking for an out. And, and, and here it is. You know, and Yvette Carnell tried to post this and say that he was trying to leave us a long time. No, he wasn't trying to leave you. You could see right there the message. It just wasn't Photoshopped. That was his message. He was trying to find a way to separate from Yvette and Tone without repudiating ADOS. He was looking for a way to do that. But see, they're so xenophobic and caught up in idolatry. It's just a toxic mask of energy that they hold. Uh, Daddy didn't want no part of those two. But he did want to be steadfast in his message with American descendants of slavery, apparently. But, you know, they have entrenched themselves so well that they are the movement and the movement is them. And here, here we got another instance where they, they, they're trying to make it seem as though they brought uh, uh, Darity on. You may have helped the brother gain some notoriety because nobody knew who the hell he was until... You guys introduced him, but uh, he was whom he was long before you guys came along trying to get the data. So in essence, because you got these folks who are out there practicing idolatry instead of trying to be black first and on code in their thinking, that's how you ended up going from this to this. OK. That's how you ended up going from this. To this. Because at this point, all you can say is, well, and keep it pushing. All right. But let's just be clear. Those two individuals, I don't trust them. If you want to idolize them and follow behind them. By all means, do your thing. But understand that they are leading you to a no man's land. And personally, they don't even know what the hell they're doing. One, one, one month, it's you can't do anything with Trump. The next month, if the right person comes along, they out there deleting old posts. And all of a sudden, you can't criticize them for working with Trump. And ultimately... I hate to say it because I do think that brother cube is, is being on code, but, um, Darity's right. Trump ain't offering reparations. Sure. Folks are trying to talk about coming to the table. And I think part of the, the, the big issue why so many folks are out there trying to get on cube is because 
Trump actually said, yo, let me holler at you. Whereas Biden and them said, oh, I see what you got going on there, but we'll talk to you after the election. Well, shit. Shout out to Roland Martin who put it out there. If they're not going to talk to you before the election, they ain't going to talk to you after. But all of a sudden, folks like Roland Martin and other folks want to forget that basic principle. They want us to continue to go along to get along. They want us to go out there and vote Biden Harris and hope that things will get put in place. And then when those things get put in place, you'll find out that those things were lukewarm at best. You find that most of what they're talking about putting in place doesn't specifically help black people. And you got folks like Ice Cube right now who is on code and letting you know that we need tangible benefits. We require reparations and you got to address specifically the descendants of American slaves. Holla at me. That's all I'm trying to say. Unfortunately, that's caused a rift in the great A. Dunce crowd community. And again, Darity, they'll enjoy reading your book. They'll try to find themselves another scholar. Antonio Moore going to have to go get the data from somebody else. And Yvette Carnell will continue licking uh, coochies and, and, and doing paint and sips with rainbow flags and stuff. And that's that. Folks, I never could stand these individuals precisely because Antonio Moore has a hater energy. Anytime I came across any of his videos, he was out there trying to prop himself up by putting someone else down. I don't like folks that do that continuously. And Yvette Carnell, when you disrespect the great Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, I got a problem. Many of us had a problem the entire time because the word had already been put out. Professor Black Truth bless his soul, show a great amount of patience in not going after the likes of Yvette Carnell. Like folks were literally trying to be on code because the message was being put out there for the first time in a long time at a greater level. And now we had the combined uh, uh, audience of the voices of new black media, the folks over at Breaking Brown and Tone Talks, and I guess the fellow uh, uh, economics or scholars that follow or listen or read the works of Sandy Darity. So, you know, folks were unified in the in that sense that we could move forward with a collective message about reparations and addressing the descendants of American slaves, but then. The fallout came when Antonio and Yvette decided that it was their movement and no one else's. And it is for that reason why many of us continue to state that we don't have a leader. The code is the leader. I can guarantee you that if Jason Black, Professor Black Truth, or Tariq Nasheed ever get off code, they're going to get called out for it because that's just the type of people that we are. You can't sit here and profess this, that, and a third, you know, two, three days a week and then turn around and get off code and we're just going to sit there and follow along because we idolize people. We, we don't do idolatry. I would never encourage anybody to idolize me or anybody else because people will let you down each and every time. Another thing that we got to come to realization is that there are going to be times when you disagree with someone. And it's okay to have a conversation around that disagreement. But these folks, Yvette and Tone, they've become a little too comfortable with open contempt and disrespect for their fellow black person. And some of you A. Dunce folks out there are too caught up in idolatry to G-check them on that shit. So now what was three is now just two. And I suspect that it won't be much longer before you end up with just one. And you're going to have idiots out there talking about them picking a side. Get on code. That's the side you need to pick. No tangibles, no vote. That's the side you need to pick. Period. All these other folks coming along talking about Democratic down ballot. 
that that ain't hitting on shit. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. If Trump and Biden can get it, then so can all of the politicians, city council members, senators, state senators, uh, uh, house representatives, they can all get it too. If you can't come with a black agenda for black people, especially in areas where blacks make up the majority of your constituency, you don't deserve my vote. Guys, those are my thoughts. I'll leave you with that. Holla at me. My name is Otomir. Peace. Mm -hmm.